Good evening, everybody. It's Sunday evening on Radio Urban. It's Denise here with you tonight, and today in the studio we have the upcoming Norwegian sensation, Astrid S., who is going to talk to us about her latest music video for the track Bloodstream and how audience feedback has had an effect on the products she has created for her new album Bloodstream. Welcome, and thank you for coming, Astrid. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome, Astrid. So tell us about your new music video. Well, the video is about a girl, a.k.a. me, struggling after a harsh breakup with her ex-lover, who she has been in a relationship with for a few years. Basically, it's about her going to all the places that she went with him to and being haunted by him because he is everywhere she goes. The video takes us through her journey of grief after the breakup. Also, not forgetting, but this narrative is cross-cut with, of course, frequent shots of me singing or lip-syncing and performing in the video as well. Okay, and, and, and how does it end? Well, you're going to have to watch it on my website, on my YouTube channel, to find out. Hear that, folks? You can check it out on Astrid's Esther's website. Sounds very interesting. So, Astrid, could you tell us about how your audience helped in creating your newest products? I believe that the audience particip- my audience p- participated in the production of my products. Dan Gilmore, who is a Web 2.0 theorist, talks about the former audience and says that the audience have the tools to create media in themselves. Throughout the course of producing the three products, my website, my music video and my album design, in vinyl, digipack and digital form, I have had some audience feedback, but not all of it was reflected in my products. My album design, however, may not have looked the same, though, without the audience feedback that I got. Okay, so can you give me some examples of particular audience feedback that helped you produce your music video and album design? Oh, yeah. So, basically, some things that they said, that there is too much repetition in editing pace, like always cutting to the beat, and also that there was some bad lip-syncing from me, which is something you do not want, since in the music video world, lip-syncing is a very common convention to see. It is really important to have. Also, they said that the narrative is slightly unclear and that there should be more scenes of the couple together before the breakup. Yeah, I agree with um, how lip-syncing has to be properly synced with the track playing and how editing pace needs to vary, for example, by not always cutting to the beat. Those are the things I always notice first when I watch a music video. But in terms of the narrative being unclear, what did you do to make it clearer? So I made my narrative clear by adding a um, adding two shots of um, the female character in the video actually um, burning a photograph of her um, in the couple with her ex-boyfriend. And basically, yes, yeah, she's burning it. And uh, that indicates that she's, she's done with him and she's trying to move on and, yeah. Okay. So that, trying okay. to make it clear. Good, okay, so just staying with the narrative point then, what age group is the narrative um, aimed at? So the narrative, and well, the music video in general, is, is um, targets um, females aged 15 to 24. Yeah. And there's also a secondary audience for, of males who are also 15 to 20, aged 15 to 24. And then also there's secondary audience for tweens. Tweens are basically um, children aged 11 to 14. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, that's so, interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I tried to um, add a bit of a playful element due to the colour correction in the video. So, you know, the um, so making the, the lighting pink and making just using colour correction, that kind of creates a playful element which attracts tweens, a younger tween audience. Yeah, because you just anticipated my next question, actually. I was going to ask you, how did you interact with your fans, uh, especially, you know, when pre- producing the video? Mm-hmm. So basically, um, the main way I interacted with fans was through social media. So obviously, social media is very um, uh, common for teens and young people today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I myself uh, am unfortunately part of that because I'm only 20. And um, so, yeah, I created this competition recently, actually, Um, during the production of the music video, where I asked fans to post a video of them dancing to the song Bloodstream, Ah, which the music video is for. That's cool. And basically, I asked them to put the Astro S wig on, which I wore in the video. (laughs) Yeah, and um, also, yeah, and basically lip-sync and dance to the song. And then the winner 
get to hang out with me and also win a free t-shirt and oh, right. uh, win a free signed copy of the latest album. Hmm. And yeah, so I got many entries and then I f- chose a winner and basically they got to hang out with me and got, got all the prizes, so, which is really good. Yeah, and then also before that, I, um, I, sent, I sent sneak peek images on my social media and asked what the fans think of them. So like um, images, um, yeah, just screenshots from the video. <clears throat> and basically people were really intrigued. They really wanted to see more. So I think it really worked to interact with them. So I can really see that social media is really, really strong in yeah. the way that you mm-hmm. interact with your fans. Are there any more examples that you want to add or you know, tips you would say for other kind of up-and-coming artists and how they can use so social media? So I would say frequently um, posting on social media. So I've got Twitter, Facebook and um, Instagram. Basically just frequently posting and like really trying to interact with the fans by mm. posting images of your your website if you have one your latest merchandise um your new arrivals in your merch store uh your latest music your gigs everything like just the more stuff you post about um your stuff and your gigs and your events basically it it really makes the audience feel like they're connected with you and mm-hmm. i think that really is important Okay, then, so maybe just a last question about merchandising. Mm-hmm. Uh, As I already, just said earlier. You already just mentioned merchandising, mm-hmm. but how important do you think this is for your target audience? And, and I'm also really keen to hear what kind of uh, products you select and, and why. So, I think merchandising is really important because it helps the fans to really feel like they're, they can identify with the artists and yeah. connect with them. Yeah. And also, um, a theorist who, I, um, who I've heard of, Dennis McQuayle, he had this theory called uses and gratifications theory. And basically, one of the gratifications in his theory is that fans can identify with... Um, well, feel like they can identify with the artist. So it's kind of personal identity. Mm-hmm. And basically, I think merchandising really helps with that. So the fans can wear all the merchandise, for example, a T-shirt or hoodie and everything. And like, yeah. And basically, in terms of what I yeah, what do, do yeah, have, what I yeah. have on How my merch store, yeah. I put on hoodies, <clears throat> uh, T-shirts, baseball caps, bags... Um, beanie hats, uh, my album obviously, and then um, some stickers from the album. So stickers with images from the the lyric booklet, which you can get in the digipack version of my album. And yeah, and also in terms of the album, you can either get the vinyl version, which is a deluxe version or the standard version, and you can also get the digital download, which is either standard or deluxe again. And then you can get the Digipack version, which is a special edition deluxe version. Mm-hmm. And the deluxe version is basically just three more tracks from the standard version. Right. So there's originally 13 tracks on the standard, but then the deluxe has got 16 tracks. So three added bonus live tracks. And also, um, which um, in a way which um, really helped further interact with the fans was I put on um, the checkered top that I wore in my music video onto the store so that um, fans can really um, identify and really try and interact with the music video as well. So it kind of creates a sense of branding throughout. And, um, yeah, so they can wear the checkered top yeah. exactly how I wore in the music video. Wow. And also I, saw, I put the beanie on there that I wore in the music video. It's a grey beanie. And, yeah, they, um, they can wear that too and... On top of that, I put the blue wig, which I wore in the music uh-huh, video. Uh-huh. So all together, if they wear the checkered top, the grey beanie and the blue wig, they can really feel like they're... They can really be Astrid S. Yeah, yeah, they can really be like <laughs> how I was in the music video. Oh, great. So yeah, That's I think really all these things really attract my target audience. Mm-hmm. And just um, I also try to make most of my clothing unisex, except the Astrid S checkered top and the wig, obviously. But yeah, the t-shirts and the hoodies are unisex, so that hopefully that would attract more males towards me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, because my target audience is females, obviously. Yeah. Because they ident- identify better. So yeah. Okay, okay. Great, Astrid. Thank you very much. It's been really great having you here. 
The video sounds amazing, and Thank we you. can't wait to see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, you can keep up to date on my social media and my website where yeah. I post upcoming gigs and everything. So, yeah, you can stay updated and subscribe to my website. Okay. So, thanks. So, thank you very much and come back and see us again soon.